Andrew Shore here in Philadelphia, where there are 5,000 doctors from around the world meeting here who are talking about organ transplant. And one big topic of conversation is the viral epidemic, and that's hepatitis C. And unfortunately for so many, the virus affects their liver where it fails and they need a liver transplant. Unfortunately for many of those people, the virus comes back and the transplanted organ can fail as well. They're working hard on preventing that. We spoke to Dr. Rajender Reddy from Penn Medicine about that. Dr. Reddy, hepatitis C is a true epidemic in the United States, isn't it? Where are we with that now? And what is the need of people with hepatitis C, perhaps years down the road, related to a liver transplant? This is a very important question. Hepatitis C is a viral infection that's been around for quite some time, and it causes chronic hepatitis and cirrhosis. And as, over time, these patients can go on to liver failure. And if you were to look at the leading cause for liver cancer, primary liver cancer, it is hepatitis C cirrhosis. In the United States, a conservative estimate says that there are about 4 million people infected with this virus. But uh, if you were to look at some special populations, the number could easily be about 5 million people. And then, once you get infected, you stand about a 20 to 30 percent risk of going on to cirrhosis over 20 to 30 years. And then once you get to cirrhosis, you have a risk of liver failure. So if you were to look at the top of the pyramid, these patients who get to cirrhosis and its consequences, the leading indication for liver transplantation is hepatitis C cirrhosis, liver failure, and liver cancer. And there have been some elegant projections done in that over the next 10 years, there will be an increase in the number of patients with hepatitis C cirrhosis and liver failure, and also primary liver cancer related to this infection and its consequences. So we have an enormous burden of disease ahead of us for the next decade. There are treatments that are effective, but they are limited. So for the next 10 years, hepatologists, liver transplant surgeons are going to be very busy dealing with this problem. Now my understanding is when someone has a liver transplant and they've had hepatitis C and trying to knock down that viral load, their liver's failed, they have a transplant, they're at risk for return of their disease and that donated liver then failing? This is again a very important question. That is why we do not want to do transplants in these patients earlier than necessary because the virus invariably attacks the new liver. And then once it attacks the new liver, there is a course that could be quite aggressive in that 20 to 40 percent of patients may end up in cirrhosis in five years. Remember I said 20 to 30 percent will develop cirrhosis prior to transplant over 30 years. Now I'm saying 20 to 40 percent will develop cirrhosis in five years. So it could be a devastating course and that's where the challenges are. And as much as you want to help these patients, there is a decreased patient and graft survival following transplantation for this infection and its disease relative to those who do not have hepatitis C infection where the outcomes are superior. So where are we now with the development of medicines to try to prevent the recurrence of the hepatitis C to have that donated organ succeed? Again, uh, there are treatment challenges with this infection. Right now, well until last week, we only had two drugs, pegylated interferon and ribavirin. And it worked in relatively few patients. But hepatitis C infection is a curable infection. So the strategy has been to try and cure this infection before the transplant. The success rates have varied anywhere from 30 to 50 percent, depending on the severity of the disease. But the good thing is, if you cure infection and they still need a transplant, there was no infection, the majority of the patients following transplant. 
So let's say you're not able to cure this infection. Patients go for transplant because of cancer or whatever reasons. And then they get infected. So we have a challenge there. So with pegylated interferon and ribavirin, we had about a 30% success at the higher end of clearing the infection. And these medications have been challenging in terms of their tolerability. But we now have two new medications. These are called protease inhibitors, baseprovir and telaprovir. And these can enhance response rates. But remember, they have to be used along with interferon and ribavirin. It is a pill, but it cannot be used by itself because patients, the virus, will develop resistance to this treatment. So it's instead of two drugs, it is three drugs. But then the good side is the response rates could be higher. But the challenging part is following transplant, there are a variety of medications that are used, particularly medications to prevent rejection, such as cyclosporin, tacrolimus, sirolimus. And there are drug-drug interactions between this new set of drugs, the protease inhibitors, and these anti-rejection drugs. So we absolutely cannot take that lightly because these drugs will increase the levels of these anti-rejection drugs and they can develop toxicity from them. So much so the dosing frequency could be very infrequent, like once a week. And if you stop the drug, the levels of these anti-rejection drugs will go down and they're at risk for rejection. So you need trained, experienced people to use these new drugs along with interferon and ribavirin to be able to clear hepatitis infection in a good number of patients. So let me see if I understand some of this. So first of all, if you have hepatitis C, unfortunately over many years, a de significant percentage will have such failure of their liver that they will need a transplant. They'll be at higher risk for liver cancer as well. Unfortunately for all too many of these patients, traditionally the virus would come back if it had not been cured. That is correct. So now, fortunately, it sounds like you have two new drugs to add to the mix with the ribavirin. The interferon. Interferon to try to deal with the disease, but you have this balancing act with the anti-rejection drugs. So that's where you're saying it's, I don't want to say tricky business, but there's an art to it. Exactly. And this is not to be taken lightly. We obviously want to help our patients, but there's a commitment to this treatment and you need some experience. And with that, I think we'll be able to help a good number of our patients, but it really needs to be done very carefully. And in fact, it's an area, major area of investigation. Are you encouraged? You've been at this many years, recognizing we do have this epidemic of hepatitis C. Are you encouraged? Indeed I am. If you were to look at advances in treatment, for a decade we struggled with pegylated interferon ribavirin, and this is the turning point. Last week, on Wednesday and Thursday, the FDA advisory committee met and voted 18 to 0 to approve these drugs for the much needy population of those infected with hepatitis C. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Dr. My pleasure. As you can see, doctors are working hard on fighting back against the effects of hepatitis C. On location in Philadelphia, I'm Andrew Shore.